Oh my gosh! This is Hulk, man. Couldn't think of what to do. Oh, no, baby! <laughs> How tall is Porzingis? I mean, he was like one meter away from me. What? What? You have to do something. Uh, that guy is going 30 points. What can you do against Show some effort. You? Don't let what? him just shoot a three-pointer. Make him drive. Make him drive. What are we talking about? So this is one of the best games. Let's see. Another Ooh. one. Oh. Confidence. Luca like is just it. killing it. Wow. Hey, guys, and welcome back to another BN Retro episode. Today, I have finally the chance to choose a game myself. A game that I actually have seen and also a game where I know all the players. So that's very cool for me. Today, I'm here with my colleagues and Urbonos co-hosts, Ritis and Donatas. Very energetic today. Super We're energetic. All very Pumped to see a game, like Rita said, one of the best games he's ever seen. Probably one of the best games I've ever seen live. Eurobasket 2017 quarterfinal between the two of the smallest countries we're probably ever going to watch on this series uh, that have a population of, I think, combined it's 4 million people. So you can imagine how small like each country Like a neighborhood of Istanbul, probably. It's crazy to say we have a classic game that uh, happened only less than six years ago but and it, it happened in the quarterfinal all, all although probably many basketball experts and people would agree that with all the respect to serbia and spain it was probably the real eurobasket final giving the quality of the game the high scoring uh, having the high scoring game game talent the way they produced on the court it was something exceptional I even talked to some Slovenian uh, journalists, very experienced jur Slovenian journalists, and they said that probably this is one of the best Eurobasket games ever. So you should now ask some one of you should ask if we're following the format of the other two uh, shows. Why did I choose this game? So why did you choose this game? Uh, just because I think people often forget that basketball or just in fact any sport is just entertainment for us, uh, for all the people watching. So I think if you want entertainment, this is the game we need to watch. So, wait, both of you watched this game live as it happened? Yep. You did, and Ritas, you were maybe commentating? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We were there in the arena. Oh, you were actually in in the venue, yeah. It was in Istanbul. It was your first Eurobasket, probably. Uh, no, my second. I, I also worked for, for Lithuanian Radio in 2015, mm. yeah. But, but as a TV commentator. As a TV commentator, this was my first Eurobasket. People were talking about the talent of Porzingis, about uh, Goran Dragic and Luka Doncic, their combo, but uh, people didn't really see these two teams as heavy favorites to win, win medals. Another thing that uh, I said to some colleagues after this game that um, you know guys now FIBA is introducing this new format and this might be the last time we see these teams uh, with such roster on on such a big stage because uh, it will be hard for them to qualify in the future knowing that they do pe depend so much on NBA talent and EuroLeague players hmm. as well and I said it in 2017 and after that we saw what happened Two years later, no Slovenia, no Latvia in the World Cup yeah, 2019. Exactly, exactly. As crazy as it sounds. I got a feeling for some of the viewers who haven't seen the game or didn't follow Slovenian basketball uh, team back in 2017, they might be wondering if that's the same Anthony Randolph that played in the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves and now he's with the Slovenian national team. So, guys, do you remember this whole like context around uh, them getting Anthony Randolph? I do remember that and I think he was naturalized by the cost of Alan Omic, who, who was a Bosnian player, a center who played for Slovenia before. He also counted as a naturalized player. And basically, Slovenian Basketball Federation just said to him, well, we got a better player, so... He, and he's, we need he, a power forward, yeah, actually. He's taking the spot. Because there was this older generation of Matias, Smodish, uh, Lorbeck, some other power forwards, and they in this current generation, they were missing of a solid power forward. So the new president of the Slovenian Basketball Federation, Radoslav Nesterovic, he looked at it as a, some fantasy game, I would say, or at the, mm. you know, as a GM, and he thought, okay, we have this weak link in this team and let's improve that uh, let's position. Sign someone so the they signed Anthony team. Randolph. I think these were the first years in Europe, 2017, and he was playing we, very we're well. We're gonna completely ignore Yanis Tima, just dunking the ball and starting his uh, show. 
I mean, come on now. <laughs> I don't know about Yanis Diva. He's such a controversial uh, character. And also, remember that? Uh, that was way later after this, obviously. But with the Summer League haircut he had, that... Uh, oh, yeah. that uh, he looked like a Florida man. <laughs> and and he was actually playing for Orlando Magic. Because he actually moved to United States when, we, when the war Florida? started. Uh, not sure about Florida. <laughs> I'm very excited to see Porzingis uh, f again in a FIBA competition. Uh, we saw some games in the in the qualifiers uh, last year. He was crazy. Uh, for example, against Turkey, I believe he scored like 40 points, something like that. And and he's having a good season in Washington as well. Might be in his peak right now, to be honest. You know, like physically and mentally. Yeah, yeah, and he's staying healthy. And you know, another funny thing, like. In 2017, Porzingis was already uh, drafted by the New York Knicks. He was already in the NBA. Doncic was about to be an NBA player yeah. after a year. Yeah. But at the time, you couldn't imagine at some point they will be on the same team together. Yeah, yeah. And there were some big expectations for Doncic and Porzingis to deliver in Dallas, but it didn't really work out. Was Yanis Tima uh, drafted? Let's do a little yes. quiz. He yes, was? I believe like 59th pick by the Memphis Grizzlies, something like that. Okay. You are wrong. It is the 60th pick, but oh. it is the Memphis Grizzlies. You're right okay. about that. So I'm dead wrong. Now, if you got the year right, I would say like 2014. Uh, just one, one uh, before, so 2013. Okay. <laughs> what happened, Yanis? That's not Yanis Timo. We we're not the 60th to pick, Yanis Timo, that we know. And that's Luka Doncic. <laughs> but that is Luka Doncic. So excited, so young, so happy. Not like right now. He's not. He's not. <laughs> not frustrated not yet. Enjoying basketball, you know. Look at this guy. Oh, oh, oh Pitch Kumater in the starts. What happened? Okay. He's the first to celebrate. First to go into fight. And of course, oh, Anton no, Randolph. Randolph who got Anton into Randolph. And I'm quite stuff. sure why they're you know trash talking already. Uh -huh. First of all, he was defending Porzingis, uh -huh. and after the game, Porzingis said that uh, he was playing dirty since the jump ball. Gasper Widmer, every time there's a close-up, he looks like a man on a mission. <laughs> I don't know. I was I was gonna comment something about it, but about his age? <laughs> no, no, yeah, some kind Once of again, a weird comment I wanted to drop there. Chanchar was only 20 years old. He was just drafted by Denver Nuggets, and they kind of found him randomly. They're gonna make that? Nah, doesn't matter. Oh wait, <laughs> okay, they made it, but I think it wasn't. It was too on late. Time. Yeah. No, it's just hard to see Giga Dimets in general. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a nice hand one. And his team are going in the post Posting. against Doncic. Nice. He put him on clinic. Where was he playing? Was he playing for Kinky? And his team was playing for Zenit. Oh, Zenit. He was well, still not in the EuroLeague. Mm. Although Latvians called this Latvian team probably one of the best uh, in their history. Actually, they had only two NBA players and two EuroLeague players. So it's like, I guess for Latvia it's sort of a redeem team, because before that they also had a good generation of players, but that generation was known more for drinking than playing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember him in Basconia as a crazy shooter. He would shoot every single time he had the ball like Ooh, this. Talking about that, <laughs> like this. He didn't have good percentages in the EuroLeague because he took so many wild shots. Look at his fingers. Uh, I remember that he was injured. He injured one of his fingers of the shooting hand and he played through injury during the tournament. So his percentages dropped a little bit, but he's still, as we see, he was still making those shots. Yeah, but Slovenian players, they really loved Kokoshkov. Uh, because he was player's coach, they loved his inspirational uh, timeouts. He was different, although he was like ex-Yugoslavian uh, basketball school head coach, he, he worked for many years in the NBA and brought that American mentality and it was a perfect for the, this team. And a lot of players, including Anthony Randall, for instance, they said that it was the best coach they have ever had, actually. I was going to ask, so why did he get uh, off the Slovenian national team? Because he I got forgot. the job in the NBA, I think. That's it, right? That's the yeah, only... and that was the time when FIBA introduced this new system yeah. where uh, you need to coach the team during these qualifying windows. Right. At the time, it, it just didn't look possible for the coach to... Uh, Do both at the same time. Yeah, yeah. sit yeah. on two chairs. So Latvia took a lead, actually. They were down by 15. They took a lead. 
Water and release. they have 55 points. Yeah, this Bloom's water release. I love his haircut, but that's just my thing. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> it's, just, it's the same uh, <laughs> same length all, always, all I'm, directions. Although I'm not the guy who should be talking about haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> so before going into the locker room, I was like, Goran, Goran is not going to give a speech, but they want somebody, you know, to... Uh, and yeah. Fire up everyone. For some reason, they thought that... Gaspar Widmer uh, should do some speech. And, you know, Widmer comes to the locker room. He starts yelling, shouting. He throws the bottle of water and starts screaming like, hey, you want to go home? I don't want to go home. I want to play. Let's let's go. Let's do something. Players were shocked. They Some of them, they were, you know, they got scared because this Hulk is, is <laughs> like shouting uh, in the, in front of their faces. And w what's going on with Widmer? He, he just lost his mind. But anyway, the team was, was inspired by one of the most quiet uh, guys uh, on the roster. They played so differently compared to how they play now. Because right now... It's all Luka Doncic. Doncic makes every single decision. Mm -hmm. and he has the ball in his hands all the time. Everybody else is just a helper. And now, that watching their offense, you see that Doncic is an important uh, part of the team. You see that in some uh, moments he can take over, but it's not like they're running their offense through him all the time. As hard as it is to stop Luka Doncic, I feel like that unpre unpredictability is a bit of a good thing for you know the opponents. They cannot yeah. just know every single time what's going to happen. Of course, it helps when Goran Dragic is six years younger. That's true. Puts it up and in. Like you said, I think this is the Slovenia ran by Goran Dragic, this, not Luka Doncic. This reminds me uh, Tony Parker. Just taking over a little bit. Sim similar style of play. You're using your speed. Uh, you have the Euro Oh step. my gosh! <laughs> oh my god, I almost spilled the drink. <laughs> Roland. Roland Schmidt. Roland Schmidt. Valmira legend. He has this explosiveness in him. Very athletic. He has for, that, uh, you know, Latvian. villager power, as we say in Lithuania. He doesn't look like the most athletic guy. I mean, okay, he has a strong body, but it's, it looks like that's it, you know. But mm. he's flying, he's dunking, he's so strong. And shout out to Valmira. I mean, both Bertans brothers, also oh, right. Schmitz, some other guys, they're all from Valmira, which is the city of like 50,000 people. And this guy, Roland Schmitz, every summer when he comes back from the season, whether it was Fon Labrada or Barcelona, he goes fishing in the city center of Valmira. Every morning, like three or four o'clock in the morning, he just goes fishing. I was thinking you're gonna say something about Jan's team uh, fishing for he's fishing attention, perhaps. I don't know with this. Man, like, he's a superstar in Latvia. He's like he's like Dennis Rodman of Latvia. Right. Really, he's that popular. Uh, everything he does, does he still it's play a scandal. basketball? Though I don't he's remember. He's playing in Puerto Rico, oh. actually, <laughs> and he's just averaging eight points per game. And he's—I don't know if he's married or he's no, just he dating a, a yeah, yeah. Russian pop singer. But I mean, superstar. She has like mm -hmm. six million followers or something. So they're that. like celebrity couple. Everything you just said sounds so bad. <laughs> I mean, everything, even the Puerto Rico part. <laughs> it's also crazy how much attention he's got he from us. He again wants to post Luca. Yeah, no, but he's Man. been successful. They just didn't Why not? feed him. They just didn't feed him. I mean, Latvia is getting good looks. It's just that they started missing shots in Ooh, the third quarter. Is that what I think? Yeah. Wow. Four yeah. foul. Four foul. In third quarter. With 14 minutes to play. And that was... And that's a very stupid foul, actually. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Well, like, yeah. what you're gonna do here, really? Yep, Dip that's how Latvians feel now. Put him on the bench f for the rest of the third quarter. As good as he is, I don't care. I need him in the fourth quarter. Maybe these guys can survive and just keep the score mm. close. And I'm playing through Randolph right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just attack him. Super you know? aggressive. And Always that's possible. what they tried the to do, actually. The oh, that was close. Yeah, that looked that like close. Could have been, uh... The problem is that Randolph is a spot up shooter. But uh, he can it, play face to basket, so. Yeah, but it's not like drawing fouls is his thing. But this one, this was close. Going, going, was stupid. going for the plo block is. Like, you are oh, such man. a risk. Oh, my God. That, that could have been a foul if yep. just a different referee was there, you know? I, th I feel like back in the day, even then. 
Luka Doncic was already complaining to the refs. Yeah. Talking, but yeah. actually, he was very shy. when mm. he. It was his first major tournament for the Slovenia national team, the senior team. And when he entered the camp, he was really shy. Uh, although he made this comment that Slovenia will go for gold in this Eurobasket, nobody seriously you know, treated uh, or considered the Slovenia national team as some uh, big favorite to win the Eurobasket. Or just, you know, getting a medal, it was like a dream. And he he never played for Slovenia, right? And before this, for any. I actually remember when I was uh, attending 2015 Eurobasket. I had some discussions with journalists. I think that even including uh, Slovenian journalists, and there were fears and doubts that a, Luca is in Madrid for a few years. What if he gets Spanish passport? And I'm not so uh, sure how serious it was, but at least there were these concerns and fears that Spanish is, you know, being very aggressive. Uh, by trying to convince him to get a Spanish passport. Also knowing now, obviously, that they won the Eurobasket, then what kind of a season followed. You think this was the first sort of um, first sight where you could see that he might dominate next season? Like when you saw this Eurobasket, was this like, were you thinking that, guys? Like It that? was like that, but did, if you remember how the Eurobasket ended, it ended with a serious injury. Then you had some doubts uh, whether his season in Madrid will be that successful because he needs to recover after the injury and everything. But yeah, the rest is history. I think uh, 2017 and 2018 just cemented him as a superstar. These were the times where, yep. you, where you could yep. see yep. Luka Doncic passing the ball to Gasper Widmer in the post, <laughs> Widmer <laughs> gathering the double team and passing the ball back mm. to Luka Doncic. Wild Those times. were the times in 2017. Wild times. Oh my gosh! At the end of uh, this is Hulk, career. career. No, oh my God. He's like, silent. can you imagine him in the locker room like this? <laughs> Damn. He's silent, but when he does explode, no, 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 no. Watch out. He's dangerous. Okay. Yeah, Vidman is so freaking underrated. Everybody talks about Doncic. Dragic, Randolph, uh, you know, when we all remember Eurobasket 2017. Even Prepelic gets more mentions. Exactly, mm. exactly. But in this game, he was really important. Uh, you know, just crashing Latvians inside the paint th because I they didn't have any, anybody, you know, to offer to him. I think and he then was in key. Spain, he was key in the semi final. Did Real Madrid win a EuroLeague with Randolph already? At that time, or they won it in 2016. I 16? Think? No, yeah, yeah, so 17. No, 15. 15. Mm. I, was, I was thinking if he was a Euroleague champion, I'm just not sure if I think Randolph he was playing. I think he wasn't. He was maybe on locomotive team, they already played together. That's yeah. why they chose him, probably, right. Was that it? I'm not so sure if Luka Doncic. Oh being, my gosh! Uh, uh, I'm not so sure Big if 17-year-old Luka Doncic had so much uh, power yeah. and influence to choose a naturalized player. Sorry, but we have to watch this again because I missed it. Ooh, my yeah. My God. But I mean, that's again. First of all, he posterized painters, and now he just did that. He's to just him. killing them inside the paint. He's just killing them. him specifically. My favorite guy. Oh, I thought it was Stroll and Schmitz actually. So yeah, Slovenia naturalized the power forward, the center. While if you take as an example, let's say Croatia, Montenegro, Bulgaria, or any other country, Spain. they go for a point guard. There's point guards everywhere. Slovenians were skeptical about Anton Randolph at first, but of course, as soon as he was, uh, you know, pro producing numbers and being important to Slovenia and his importance grew throughout every game in the tournament, they fall in love with him. And uh, later, they had a nickname, not a nickname, the Slovenian name for him, which is Tonček. I remember Bo Caleb for North Macedonia being like Borcha Maklebovsky or something true. like that. <laughs> true, true. Come on, Anthony. I mean, come on, Tonchek. You should put more effort in, <laughs> what, what in effort stopping this. What effort can he put, man? I mean, no, he, he didn't really even, do. you know, raise his hand. He, he just did. tried to jump. He did. It's he like, did. I don't he care. Did. I don't care hand raise. How tall is Porzingis? I mean, he was like one meter away from me. What? What? You have to do something. What that guy is scoring 30 points. What can you do against Show some effort. You? Don't let what? him just shoot a three-pointer. Make him drive. Make him drive. What are we talking about? 
We're talking about giving all the power to the shooter. How many no. fouls Randall has? How many fouls Randall ha has? I, I have no clue. Four. Three? Three? Four. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you want him to pressure. Poor thing is, with four fouls, he was blowing Prepilic down. So was that smart? Who cares? Was that smart? Not the smartest <laughs> choice. It's a chaotic offensive possession. I don't know. Nothing happened, really. Couldn't think of what to do. Oh, no, baby. <laughs> Luca magic. Sometimes from these like stupid, stupid of offensive attacks, you get like a spectacular moment like that. Luca, there's no stupid shots. I'm thinking that's Madrid DNA, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah it has yeah, to yeah. do something Blue. with Sergio Yui. Yui. Did you see uh, Madrid's game yesterday? Yeah. Did you see the shots by Rudy and Hanga? Mm -hmm. Somehow only Madrid players make these uh, crazy three pointers. Nice fake hand up. Ooh. Don't see that very often. So this is one of the best games. Let's see another Ooh. one. Oh, confidence! Luca like just it. killing it. Wow. No, Vidmar is guarding Pozingis. <laughs> uh, foul, fifth what a foul. Shame. That's a oh, fifth foul. Oh, is it? Mm. Yeah. So now they got Demets or, oh or Randolph. Two options, right? It feels, it feels like in every tournament they have these crucial mi minutes with Giga Dimas playing the <laughs> center position. Or Edo Muric as an undersized <laughs> center. Mm. During the game, I realized that it's a shame we will have to say goodbye to one of these teams. Mm. That's true, that's true, because they're both playing like entertaining type yeah, of basketball that you, you want to like see. you would like to have mm -hmm. this game in a medal stage. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! That's a nice pass, first of all. Yeah. The dunk is just Good dunk. Done. At least if it's a semi-final, you know that the mm -hmm. team which loses the game gets to play for the bronze medal. Ten points uh, all from free throws. For uh, that's realistic. That, that's being realistic. Preplich. Ten points from free throws. Oh my! Ay, ay, ay. Oh my! That was nice. Oh my! The game is on. I think. One point game. Oh my! Uh, Why are you playing this year? Can't blame him for taking it. That's also foul. Mm. It was hot. He was feeling yeah. it. Yeah. He was rushing it, I think. No, but I mean, he's playing for Latvia. <laughs> Every shot for Latvia seems like a rush <laughs> shot. And now it's Bertans posting with Doncic. Successfully? Wow. Oh my. He missed that dunk. Almost. That is, huh? very, that is very unlucky, to be honest. Yeah. He really did everything he needed to do there. Yeah. And then just ball rattles out. There's a whole sequence of some unlucky or just mm. bad plays. They rush this three pointer, then they, they foul them. Oh no, I think he's gonna kill them. No. Oh, Edo Muric is killing them, that, actually. That is crucial. Although now they'll still have a full possession if they defend. But they that's the guy to kill the game. That's what we go with. That offensive rebound. Cost, was it? Was it? That was it? Cost the game. Edo Muric is known for these plays. Let's hope Yanis Timo will save them. Or Porzingis, uh, another Ooh, another out. one that rattled out. That that would be uh, unsportsmanlike these days. Did you think there's a chance that they could go all the way? Yes, because in this game they showed their real potential. I would say quality-wise, how good Latvia. they can be. Still, Latvia was really playing really quality basketball. So, but you knew it's not going to be a problem to score in this game. Uh, I honestly. After this game, I was still thinking that Spain is gonna win, win the gold medal, and I I did put Serbia uh, as number two. Yeah, Slovenia yeah. surprised me in the semifinal oh. because actually what you were saying, that that's what I was yep. thinking well, after yep, the game. Yep, yep, game is not yep. over. Anton Randall and Kristaps Porzingis finally He's got under his skin, I guess. Sorry, uh, we'll let you. Yeah, yeah. Your he, he invites him to the parking lot. That's yeah, cool. Oh, to the parking lot? Yep. Actually? Is this a story? Uh, or is this I've read it somewhere. That he just said... Or, or I just saw some tweets. Uh. Yeah, no, he just said, let's meet outside. <laughs> <laughs> I love this because nobody ever goes and actually meets outside. Like <laughs> They just like to say those things and then okay. well, nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's go, Anthony. Ooh. Let's go on Tonchek or what was the Slovenian <laughs> name? Tonchek. Tonchek. Oh, 
That's okay. Yeah, that was uh, that was unnecessary. That was just personal, like everything that happened afterwards. It seemed like there was a personal battle between Randolph and Porzingis. Porzingis. Por Porzingis. Porzingis. Whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, and and he just won the battle. I mean, if you really want to, you can call him Tingis Pingis, like the <laughs> Americans yeah. do. But Porzingis. Come on, there's some Porzingis. boundaries you got. Kristaps <laughs> Porzingis. I'm sorry. They might win it. Mm. Randall <laughs> actually got oh, ejected. He, yeah. Oh, ejected. Because I saw a technical foul. Yeah, but up. he has to leave. So if oh, it was sense. probably two technical fouls because Porzingis also got technical. I mean, Randolph was on four fouls. Uh, Either uh, way, but but still, you're he not. Was eject yeah, you're, yeah, you don't ejected. have to leave the the court. Had twenty or something. Let's celebrate with this a little bit. Yeah, yeah. like this. Slovenia. I'm, I'm trying to be uh, uh, as little cringe as possible. And I'm trying to be the and, most and cringe. You're, you're just trying to drive the cringe train. It was probably one of the best Luka Doncic games for Slovenia national team before he entered the NBA. National team basketball is tricky. You still need uh, good teammates to win, as good as you are. And, and with the system, you need to qualify in the first. And place, with the so. system, you still need to qualify. Yeah, so it's it's a good thing that we will see both of these teams in the in in twenty twenty three. Um, both qualified. Porzingis hopefully will be there. Doncic will be there, and it should be very exciting. Maybe they'll meet each other again. Who knows? I think it's time next game to watch something Euroleague again because now we had two national team games. Let's watch some Euroleague. We'll see. Let us know in the comments below. Also, like this video for us to make it out there to people for people to see it easier. And also check out our BM Plus platform right here where you will get uh, just more content from us. We are giving away a Nikola oh. Jokic jersey. Okay. Original Nikola Jokic jersey. And the only way to get it is to subscribe right now. And one of our lucky subscribers, once we hit 75,000 subscribers, we'll choose one to win that jersey. Thank you for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.